Today we want to talk about the butterfly and the cocoon. You can see here there's stages of the cocoon and pretty soon the butterfly comes out. So the man found a cocoon of a butterfly. One day a small opening appeared. He sat and watched the butterfly for several hours as it struggled to force its body through that little hole. Didn't seem to stop making any progress. It appeared as if it had gotten as far as it could and it could go no farther. Then the man decided to help the butterfly. So he took a pair of scissors and he snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon. The butterfly then emerged easily, but it had a swollen body and a small shriveled wings. The man continued to watch the butterfly because he expected that at that moment the wings would enlarge and expand to be able to support the body which would contract in time. The problem is, is that neither happened. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its life crawling around with a swollen body and shriveled wings. It never was able to fly. What this man in his kindness and haste did not understand was that the restricting cocoon and the struggle required for the butterfly to get through the tiny opening were nature's way of forcing the fluid from the body of the butterfly into its wings so that it would be ready for flight once it achieved its freedom from the cocoon. Sometimes struggles are exactly what we need in life. Amen. If nature allowed us to go through your life without any obstacles, it would cripple us. We would not be as strong as we would, could have been, and we could never fly. Well, a lot of people have probably heard about the caterpillar, cocoons, they may not know for sure just what they are. Basically, they're nothing more than a protective casing that is around an insect. This is made of either silk or some other similar silk fibrous material that is then spun around the insect during the pulpal stage which is a life stage of an insect that is undergoing transformation. While the most common type of cocoon are those that are found around butterflies or moths, the egg case of a spider is also a type of cocoon. Usually an insect will enter into a cocoon so that they will be protected from the harsh, or unfriendly environment. This is why most of the time insects will spend the winter time in their cocoons. So as the days get shorter and cooler in the fall, these insects will start to spin a silky envelope around themselves. They will then retreat into this cocoon and spend the winter without the need for food or water. In making the cocoon, the silk is spun from two glands that are located inside of the insect. These glands are filled with a material that is thick and glue-like. An insect will then work in a figure eight in order to wrap themselves up inside of this silk. This material is pressed out of the insect's two slender threads. These threads will then stick together as they emerge 
and grow hard when fresh air touches them. Inside the cocoon, the caterpillar makes a chrysalis and the caterpillar will then liquefy completely. From this substance, the butterfly will begin to emerge. When we accept Jesus our personal, as our personal Savior, Jesus promised to give us the Holy Ghost, which we are sealed, just like the cocoon. In Ephesians 1 13 it says, In whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Just as the caterpillar makes a chrysalis, which the caterpillar liquefies in, when we are sealed with the Holy Ghost, it gives us the fruit of the Spirit, which we also liquefy in the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. We are, we are to become the seeds of the fruit. of the Holy Spirit, and our old man is to die and liquefy. In Romans 6, 4, it says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Unlike the butterfly that has to fight to get out of the cocoon, our fight is while we're in the cocoon. Our transformation inside our cocoon of the Holy Ghost and our transformation is, comes into the image of Jesus the Christ. Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The New Testament teaches us that we will go through much tribulation after being sealed with the Holy Ghost. So let's read about Paul when he was stoned. There came thither a certain Jew from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium, and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Yes, we are all going to go through tribulation, every one of us. Jesus also said we are going to go through tribulations. In John 16, 33, he says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus also said to be in good cheer, for he had overcome the world. Can you think about that? Going through tribulations and the tribulations we have, how can you be in good cheer? We 
We are to struggle through tribulations with good cheer. How can we do this with the coronavirus in good cheer? The Word of God tells us this old earth is not our final resting place. That's the first thing that gives you hope and gives you cheer. Yes, you're going to go through tribulation. Yes, there's going to be pestilence. Yes, there's going to be plagues. But you know what? This isn't our final resting place. That's what the Bible says. Oh, wow. Good cheer. Right? We were never created to stay in this type of environment. We are looking for a place not made with hands. First, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle was dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And Jesus is building us a city. A brand new city. In Revelation 21, 2, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. No more pestilence, no more plagues. No more crying, no more tears. Jesus is making all things new. Yes, you're going to go through tribulation here. That's what's forming you into the image of Christ. Just like the caterpillar inside that cocoon. It's transforming into something so much more beautiful. We know that Jesus is coming back and he's going to resurrect all those who have accepted him as their personal Savior. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we should be comforting one another. When we go through tribulations and trials and plagues, coronavirus, we need to be comforting each other with the words that God has. We also believe and know that through God's word that while we go through our tribulations after accepting Jesus before the resurrection that Jesus is praying for us. Did you know that Jesus prays for us once we accept him? He prays for us to keep the faith and have strength to go through every trial. Just read what it says in John 17, 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. See, Jesus doesn't pray for the world. He already died on the cross, and it's free, salvation's free if they accept it. But he isn't praying for them. He died for them. But those that accept Jesus, he prays for them. Not for the world but everyone that has accepted Jesus. So that's why it says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given, given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name 
those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, otherwise they won't have tribulation. They're here to have tribulation. They're here to go through for the transformation, to help the transformation that is to be. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. You're sent into the world. You're going to have tribulations. You're going to see the plagues. You're going to see the famines. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Woo! He prays for everyone that accepts him. that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. <clears throat> Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Is not this a wonderful hope? There's nothing that you go through that he's not praying for you. Do you think God doesn't answer Jesus' prayer? He's praying for you that you fail not. Right? He keeps you. He is our high priest. He continually praying for you 24-7. If a priest is praying for you 24-7, there's no way that you're not going to make him in your home. You should have that hope. You should have the cheer to know that this world is nothing. It's but a vapor. He has prepared for us a city, a beautiful city, whose streets are made out of pure gold. God is good. Yes, we have wonderful hope, and through everything that the sin of the world throws at us, we can have good cheer. Let us stand. Dear Lord in heaven, again, we want to thank you for today, the opportunity to come and worship you to hear your word and to know that we not only have hope, but we can have cheer knowing in God's word what he has prepared for us, that he's constantly there for us. And Lord, we know that we also can pray. He says, if any sick among you, you can call upon the elders and being anointed and that belief and being healed. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is to have those benefits. Help us and guide us to know, not to have fear of this world, knowing what he has prepared for us, but be ready 
for what he has prepared for us. I want to praise your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.